after the Pan Ams, and she had a great experience there. Um, Gino and CD were at the Pan Ams in Toronto, so I don't know if that's where they figured that the venue would be great. Um, we knew it would be somewhere close, but having it in Toronto is going to be just wonderful. Having Pan Ams here a couple years ago, I, I know that was, that was a huge thrill for her, and now for her to come back with UConn, with her college team, and to be playing on this stage will be, um, I'm sure, a highlight of her career. I just feel like I'm that little, that little girl watching her play on Canadian national television with the national team <laughs> and being like, wow, this is an amazing player. And now I'll have the chance to watch it live. That's craziness. Welcome inside the Madame Athletic Center in downtown Toronto, bringing you a special presentation of NCAA women's basketball. The last time these two teams faced off, it was 641 days ago exactly, March 21st, 2016, game two of the NCAA National Championship. And we have tip-off here at the Madame Athletic Center. UConn will control back the other way. Collier, one on five, swing. Kia Nurse from the corner, bang! Nurse for three. It's been a Kia Nurse show here tonight. Explain to me a little bit about the importance of Kia Nurse to the Canadian national program. Well, you know, Kia's been a, she's a young veteran with our team. She's had great success with the Pan Am Games and an Olympian already at this age. So, you know, she's a spark plug for us and it's been great to have her as part of our program. Gets it back, hand in her face, doesn't matter. She knocks that one down and we know Kia Nurse loves to shoot in this building. As Kadrian Loss is able to finish, can Nurse beat the buzzer? Yes, she can. And UConn will take a 54-22 lead into half. Kia Nurse scores once again. Dwayne, nobody knows about the growing game of basketball in Canada more than yourself. How important is a sold-out event like this for growing the game here in Canada? Well, I think it's great. It's, it, first of all, like my daughter, it shows little girls the fact that basketball is very important. You got Coach Ariyama, who is one of the winningest coaches in college basketball in the States. As a, as a team, UConn is a team being here. So it, it's a great example for young ladies here in the country of Canada. To getting on that big stage as Nurse will take this one on the break herself and finish once again. Williams will look around, gets it to Nurse. She's got some room. She gets in on the three-point party. And she just doesn't want Samuelson to totally take that thunder from her from beyond the arc. You know, she says, this is my homecoming game. I can shoot it too. Richardson is all over her. They're not letting her shoot the ball this time. She'll drive and kick. Nurse the three. That's good. Kia Nurse is a shooter. She can hit that shot. She's been shooting 54% from behind the three-point line. Bounce pass. Kia Nurse with the left hand. Yeah. Senior to senior. Those two have been playing side by side for four years. Can't clean it up as well. And the final buzzer will sound as UConn doubles up Duquesne. 104-52 in a homecoming game for Kia Nurse. And Dan Burt's troops fought real hard, but just up against an incredible opponent. Thanks, Mitch. I'm standing alongside a few Canadians. A big showcase here tonight. I'll start with you, Annie Pierre. What was it like being able to showcase the talents in front of a sold-out crowd here in Toronto? Uh, I mean, this crowd is awesome. Uh, of course, it's our home country. It's, it's always cool. Uh, bringing all the work we do with our team back here and then speaking to our people, it's just, it's amazing. Couldn't be better. I think an event like this, it, seeing all the young girls in the crowd, it's such a promising thing to see. And just hearing the cheers for Kia and all the other Canadians here, it's such a good thing to see for the future of Canada basketball. I've traveled all over the U.S. and had conversations and we've talked and so, oh yeah, yeah, my daughter plays at UConn. I'm like, who's your daughter? I mean, that's your daughter. <laughs> you know, so now, now I'm a guy from Canada and, you know, you go to the U.S. and people know who your kid is in the U.S. It's, it's funny and it, she's more, it's funny, she's more popular than you'd say Darnell who plays in the NHL. For everyone that, that grew up watching her or played against her, uh, you know, coaches she's played for, that, for them to have the opportunity to, to all be in one place, not far from home, uh, basically home in the end, and have the opportunity to see her play, I think that's a special moment uh, you know, for, for all of basketball, really in Southern Ontario. And, um, you know, and I'm really happy uh, that she gets the opportunity to do that. So I played with Kia um, when I was in grade two. She was in grade four, and then growing up kind of with her, it, it was a great leader. Lots of people want to see her, and they don't necessarily have the time or the effort to go down to UConn and watch her, as well as the team. Like, I was lucky enough to go and see them, and they're a fantastic basketball team. So to bring that to Canada is just amazing opportunity. You talk to a lot of the girls right now, the younger players, they know who Kia is. And for them to go and see Kia, and say, hey, I can be there. She's done it, I've done it. 
that wasn't always there in the past. But now there's that visible person who's been on the same pathway. I think that's the most exciting thing for me. And to watch the crowd and see all the little girls that are waving Kia's having their number, that's what I'll get me more excited. Sold out Madame Athletic Center, downtown Toronto, just an hour away from where you grew up. Tell me about the emotions. I mean, so many emotions going through me right now, and it's just absolutely incredible to see so many people I know and then so many aspiring young athletes. And when you come to the gym and get to see this, one kid leaves today and says, I want to keep playing sports, I feel like our job is done. And I think when you can have female role models who not only are athletes, but who are people who genuinely care about others, who want to go and make a difference, then it's only the sky's limit for people. And you have someone that you can talk to, you have people that you can go and hang out with. And I think that is a big part of pushing young females to continue to play sports, to find these other things that I said that aren't limited to athletic success. So if I was in, in this position and able to, to see such high level basketball, I mean, I would be extremely fortunate and I think it would just make me want to be a better athlete every single day.